Alright, I've been getting lots of questions about how to care for Brazilian short tailed opossums. So this is going to be a video just about that. I'm starting off just showing, this is my Brazilian short tailed opossum Lucy. She's almost four years old. I had her since she was born in December 2005. And the reason I'm showing her first is, first thing I want to talk about is how long these guys live. Uh, Online you might find some sources that say they can live up to eight years, uh, but most documented cases of people that have had them have pets, as pets, most people have said they live about four years. This is the oldest uh, possum I ha I've ever had. She's, like I said, almost four years old, and she's still looking good. So I'm not sure how long they live. But like I said, it's going to be somewhere between four and eight years, eight being probably just like a random max if you just take care of them perfectly. Um, but anyways, so that's that. So now let's talk about their cages. For cage size, you're going to want something that's as big as you can get. But don't get something like a ferret cage or a guinea pig cage, as those have bars that are too far apart. You're going to want half inch bar spacing or smaller. Uh, what I use is the large hamster cages. You can't use a small hamster cage. I have a couple mice in here. This would be way too small for a possum. But as you can see, the cage under it is about three times as tall. It's probably about two and a half feet tall, foot and a half wide, and a foot deep. Bird over here making noise. In their cage, you need a wheel for sure. They're very active at night and they run probably for two to five hours every night, constantly. They're very fast and very long runners, so you need a wheel in their cage. For bedding, you're gonna wanna use aspen or some type of paper bedding. Don't use pine or cedar. Uh, I don't know if it's bad for them, but pine or cedar is bad for many types of animals, so don't use pine or cedar, use aspen. Gonna need to give them some type of uh, sleeping area. Just like most pets, they're gonna sleep in there most of the day. They're nocturnal animals, so they will wake up and be active mostly during the night. Uh, right now it's about nine in the morning and he'll probably be going to sleep pretty soon. Up for Lucy, she's in a, also the same type of kind of long, tall, large hamster cage. And for her, I have a, a sleeping area just hanging from the top and she's always really like that. You can hang your sleeping area, or you can just put it on the ground. Give them some bedding. Uh, usually, none of my opossums have ever gone to the bathroom in their sleeping area, so I really like hanging it because I can give her some of that fluff bedding, and I don't have to clean it out every week like I clean the bottom of the cage. I just clean out her sleeping area once every like three weeks, because like I said, she doesn't use the, use the bathroom in her nest, so. I like to hang it for that reason. Of course you're going to need a water bottle on the cage. You can use a water dish if you want, but a water bottle is going to be easier. You're not going to have to worry about filling it as much or worry about if it's empty or dirty. And then food. Food's the biggest thing that people ask about with the short-tailed opossums, and that's because short-tailed opossums aren't kept as commonly as dogs or cats. So there's not possum food out there that's really good. There is one or two types of possum food, uh, but from what I've read about them, they're really not the best. Uh, so what I feed my short-tailed opossums is what I recommend. Like I said, it's been doing great for Lucy. She's almost four years old and looks happy and healthy. And what I've given her basically her whole life is a mixture. Uh, when I first show you this, it's going to look like it's expensive to initially buy but it lasts forever basically. These animals don't eat very much really. They, you can fill up a food dish and it'll last in their cage for three, four, five days. So I have a lot of food for them, but it lasts a long time. So this is what I feed my possums. I feed them a mixture of dog food, currently using Beneful. I have hedgehog food. I have sugar glider food. Ferret food more dog food, this is cat food, and more hedgehog food. Now what I do is I mix up a tub of it. 
and this is just an old container for some dog food I had. I mixed up all these foods into this tub and then this is how I feed my possums. So I don't have to open up every bag every day and pick out pieces to feed them. Just about once a month or two I fill up this tub with a mixture of all the foods and I get the mixture of all the foods and then I just feed them this. And this gives them a great variety in their diet. They have all types of food, all types of nutrition, and this type of uh, diet should be fed all the time. It should be always available in their cage. They don't really overeat. They're not gonna, they're not gonna stuff themselves and make themselves uh, become obese. They'll only eat as much as they need, so you, you leave that readily available in their cage. Other things that you can feed them now are fruits, vegetables, uh, mine really like pineapple, grapes, you can feed them all types of vegetables. There are one or two types of vegetables and I, I don't know them offhand. I think one might be avocado or something that are, is not good for them. So if you're going to feed something other than like normal, like, like I said, I, I know pineapple is good, grapes are fine, strawberries are fine. Uh, vegetables that are fine are carrots, but you're going to want to steam them or heat them up so they're soft. Uh, corn, peas, uh, lettuce is fine. But if you if you go outside of out of the normal uh, vegetables and fruits, you might want to look up if it's uh, safe because there is one or two types that isn't. Uh, but like I said, I don't know them off the top of my head. Other things that you can feed are see if he'll take one right now. Actually are the, all the types of worms, your meal worms, your super worms, any of the worms. This guy sometimes doesn't like the worms, we'll see if he wants it. Sometimes he just sniffs at it. Lucy always takes them, so we'll go give it to her. It's over there. Over here. Yeah. Get it? I dropped it. Find it. Other things you can feed are pinky mice, fuzzy mice. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen me feed adult mice too. You can do this. Uh, I feed them, but I watch them carefully during feedings. I wouldn't recommend everyone feed uh, adult mice to their possums because there is a risk of the possum getting hurt. Now, I've been feeding adult mice to my possums for about five years now, and never once has any of my possums been hurt. Uh, and in those five years, I've probably fed hundreds of adult mice. And like I said, nothing, no injury has ever happened to my possums. But there is the risk, so if you're going to do that, be aware there is a risk that it could bite your possum and potentially, you know, potentially even kill it if it bites it and causes an infection. Uh, so I recommend if you're going to feed anything live, just that it be pinkies or fuzzies. Um, what else is there? Went over their cage and their bedding. They need a sleeping area, a water bottle, and a wheel and their food, that's about it. Um, I've only got about a minute left, so I'll just go over it quickly. If you do get a possum, hopefully you get one from a, a good breeder. Most people that sell the possums uh, hold them and hand tame them because there are very few people that actually breed these anymore. But if you do find one or two at a pet shop and they're really skittish and kind of mean, make sure that they're younger possum that you're buying. If you buy a three or four year old possum that's really mean, it's going to be hard to tame them. But if you buy like a young possum under a year old, there's a good chance that even if he is kind of mean in the pet store that he'll come around and become tame over time. Best way when you get them is just to bring them home, put them in their cage and leave them alone for at least a day or two. You could sit around them and talk to them and kind of put your hand by the cage so they can see you and smell you, but let them just stay in their cage for a day or two and check it out. and then. You could start trying to take them out, seeing if they're gonna let you pick them up. If they back away and hiss, then just sit by the cage more and try to, you know, give them some treats and try to get them to have you trust, uh, get your trust. 
I'm at 10 minutes now. I got to cut this off.